Hi, I'm Teresa and welcome to my channel. Today I'm doing my first wrap up of 2021, my January wrap up. So I will be honest, January has not been my best reading month in terms of quality and in terms of my mood. I feel like I've been feeling very, very slumpy. I've been struggling to just connect with a book just to get completely absorbed in it. And I think that's actually affected my ratings and my experience of reading these books because there's ones that I know I'd have loved but I've just not and it's been very average. So I'm a bit mad about that but what can you do? But without further ado let's just get started. The first book I read was an arc of The Girls I've Been by Tess Sharp. I've got the art copy so covers on the back. I originally read this through NetGalley though I've now obviously got a physical arc and I loved 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 this book. It was so good. So this follows a girl called Nora O'Malley and she is an ex-con artist and she grew up with her mother, a con artist, and she always had to change her identity to fit with her mother's cons and now she's away from her mother, she's living with her sister, she's got her own life and one day she goes to the bank to deposit some cash with her girlfriend and her best friend and there's a bit of a friendship drama going on here because her best friend Wes had just only just discovered that Iris and Nora are together and he's maybe not quite the happiest because of some previous drama. Anyway they go to the bank and end up in the middle of a bank heist and Nora's using her skills as an ex-con and revisiting her past to kind of get them out of this situation. This book is just so 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 well written. I'm so impressed. It is told through a kind of dual timeline between the bank heist and Nora recounting her past and these different girls she's had to become and how that has influenced her and made her who she is today and how that's helping her in this bank heist situation. And this just worked so 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 well together like you'd be building up tension and everything in one timeline and in the other simultaneously and it was just intense. I could not put it down. So 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 good. There's this like there's this really really nuanced look at trauma and child abuse and a lot of really quite heavy subjects and I thought they were just handled very very delicately and very sensitively though I 100% recommend checking out trigger warnings I will link down below. There is also a sapphic relationship in this book which I just adored it was so cute I just I loved the character so much I loved Nora's girlfriend Iris so much yeah this book was just it was fantastic it's not like any other thriller or even just book i've ever read it's something else completely and i highly highly recommend it and as this one's an arc i do have a full review if you want to check it out i will leave it linked down below the next book i read was 11 paper hearts by kelsey hartwell i'm not going to talk about this too much because honestly i don't remember much about it for reading it a month ago and i didn't enjoy it when i read it this is a finished copy that I received unsolicited and it is not something I would be interested in but I picked it up because I'd gotten it and I felt bad not but it was definitely not my type of book but it was just very cliche, I didn't like the characters, the plot wasn't very exciting, nothing about this really appealed to me however I did read it and finish it when I'd just been kind of planning on picking it up for a few pages to see what it was like and then maybe DNFing it if it didn't take my interest. But it did grab my interest, or what did, was the writing style. The writing in this book is incredible. It, I didn't care about anything, but I could not put it down. I, it was so easy to read, so quick to read, so gripping, which is just very strange. But yes, I did not enjoy the book, but I would recommend it for maybe younger readers looking to start YA, and for fans of other books or series like To All The Boys I've Loved Before, I think I think that this would just be perfect for fans of that book. I wasn't a huge fan, but I think it's got the right kind of vibes. Next up I read the prequel stories to Queen of Coin and Whispers by Helen Corcoran. So this prequel is, is 40 pages long, it's only available online, it's completely free if you've read this one and I would recommend you then read the prequels. I originally read this book last year so it's been a while but I just really loved being back in the world, seeing the characters a bit. It was a good time and I didn't feel like I was struggling to follow or to understand what was happening even though it had been so long since I'd read this one. So it was just a good fun time being back in this world. It's this 
low fantasy world, so a different world but without magical elements. And it's a political fantasy of manners and you follow a dual perspective between a idealistic young queen and her spy master. And it's a sapphic romance in it. And it's a lot, a lot of fun. And the prequels kind of showed you, it was in a fanfic style, which I loved. It was like however many times they nearly met and the one time they did following these two characters. And so you saw a bit of their lives before the book and then you got their first meeting, but from the perspective of the other character, which was a lot of fun. Next up, I read The Wicker King by Kate Ancrum. So this is a book that I've been really looking forward to reading, but I was a bit intimidated by because I thought that the premise, although it sounded amazing, sounded like it could be quite confusing. And I was wrong, it was not confusing. It was just delightful. <laughs> so this follows two boys, August and Jack, and they have this really, really intense codependent friendship. And so when Jack starts having hallucinations just increasingly vivid of this fantasy world layered over the top of their own, August goes along with what Jack says and his kind of quest to help save this world. And so you see them dealing with just regular high school things and neglect and having quite a hard time of it. They are not in the best living situations, but then coupled with Jack's hallucinations and just feeling very very let down by his sister and I thought that was really really well represented, very well done and this was also just very very enjoyable to read, really quick to read and you got that intensity of Jack's hallucinations and just this feeling of being stranded of not knowing what to do, it was really really well written. I also love that it's got some multimedia elements and it's just got these, it's just got such an interesting format in which it's told. It's told through teeny weeny chapters, like the longest is a few pages. And it just worked so well to keep this constant pace and it was just really really enjoyable to read, really quick and engaging to read, even though my mood perhaps wasn't the best for reading this month. And then next I read the little novella companion to this. This is another just like 40 pages free online. And so this book is told through August's point of view. And so in the novella, you got a bit of the story from Jack's point of view. And you had these like alternating chapters of hallucination and reality and what Jack was seeing during important scenes in this book. And I really liked that. I thought that it worked very, very well with the story. And I, I really just liked seeing Jack's point of view during all of this. And yes, I really, really enjoyed this book and it's a wee novella. And I'm really looking forward to reading more from Kate Ancrum. The next book I read was Plain Bad Heroines by Emily M. Danforth. Again, this is an arc with the actual cover on the back. So this is an adult gothic horror and you're following a dual timeline as well. And so in the present day, you are following the production of a film based on the story of what happened at a girls boarding school in I think the beginning of the 20th century. And then you're also following what happened in the past in the other timeline and kind of uncovering the truth really and it's a very large book but very interesting. I liked seeing how these timelines work together. Unfortunately this book wasn't completely for me I have to say. I don't think my reading mood helped and I do not think this helped my mood because as I've said it is long and it's quite dense, it's quite slow, there's a lot happening. Now I'd already been struggling to kind of connect with characters and then with this one because you follow so, so many different characters, I just find it very, very difficult to connect with the story. I really did enjoy the writing style. I think it worked very, very well, the narrative style. But I think, I think this book's length just worked against it. The sheer scope of the storytelling happening here was just too much for one book. And I, it was just long. This is one I think I would maybe like to revisit at some point when I'm in a better reading mood and I know more what to expect from it and I might actually listen to the audiobook as well and maybe that will help kind of get me into the book and moving a bit faster through the book but I have to say it is gloriously sapphic. I loved that aspect so 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 much and it actually uses the word sapphic in the book which I had not seen before but I loved. So in both timelines you are following sapphic characters, all your main characters are sapphic, you've got a polyamorous relationship happening, you've got so much just sapphicness, it's incredible and I really really loved it. 
and I have to say the horror was very very well written as well I really enjoyed that um, it was very like unsettling and sometimes I just dreaded picking this book up because I didn't want something bad to happen it was an interesting reading experience and I had a lot of difficulty deciding whether it's one I actually enjoyed or not but I think overall I did enjoy the next book I read was Gemina by Jay Kristoff and Amy Kaufman so this is the sequel to Illuminae which I read in December and I've been buddy reading these and just reading like a lot at a time and it's been so 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 fun because these books are so intense and so just quick to read because they're told through a really interesting multimedia format and so in this sequel you're following a different set of characters to the original Illuminae but this kind of continuation of the story but from a different perspective and that was really interesting to me to see like what other people were thinking at that time and what was happening and also seeing how the kind of two storylines came together was was really really cool i have to say that i did not like our main characters in this one as much as in illuminate i really really liked the main character katie in illuminate and although i did not like her love interest that much but <laughs> But in this one you're also following a girl and a boy who are also having some kind of romantic relationship and I just wasn't quite as sold on them as characters as I was with Katie. But yes, I am very very excited to read the third book, Obsidio, especially after the massive cliffhanger this one ended on. I cannot wait, very very excited, hopefully I'll get to read that this month, we'll see. And finally I read A Darker Shade of Magic by Victoria Schwab. I have finally read it! I've been saying how long I'm gonna read it and I finally have and then it was kind of like underwhelming I have to say. So this follows two point of views. You've got Kel who lives in Red London and he is able to travel between these different worlds and he categorizes them by colour. You've got Red London where he's from where magic is just abundant. You've got Grey London which is our London really but in the 19th century I believe you have got white London where the magic kind of just sucked out and there's a lot of political unrest and it's just not a very pleasant place and then black London where magic took over and nothing remains and you also follow Lila who is a petty thief really from our London and Cal gets himself tangled up in a bit of a situation and then runs into Lila and she tries to steal from him and this all just sets off a series of events that lead to some bad stuff happening really and Layla and Kel having to work together and go on a kind of quest together to try and fix things and I really did enjoy this and I like the writing style and the kind of world and the magic system that you're introduced to. I do have to say that I hadn't read the synopsis or had it in years at least and so I was kind of like waiting for the story to start and then realised it already had but it just hadn't been what I was expecting and it, I don't know it just was underwhelming I don't know if it's just because I've hyped it so 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 much in my head or what but I did expect more from it although I enjoyed what I read and I, I, I can't decide what to rate it because I feel like it is my reading mood my overhyping in my head that's maybe tarnished my experience of reading this a bit but yes I am very intrigued to see where the series goes though I'm not like, immediately needing to pick up the sequel because this book wraps up very very well it can almost stand alone but yes I will eventually pick up the sequels they are rather large and I'm quite intimidated by that but yes I do hope to read them soon and that is all I read in January so it perhaps wasn't my best reading month in terms of my own mood and it was definitely quite a mix there's no five stars but overall not bad especially for being back at university the past couple of weeks and for playing bad herons taking me about two weeks to read just on its own and yes thank you very very much for watching this i hope you've enjoyed and i will see you in a video soon